So if you're somebody who works with pivot tables all the time, or you're somebody who doesn't know what a pivot table is, I made a pivot table builder here that will actually build the pivot tables for you. So if you don't know what a pivot table is, you can look at um, something like this. I got some statistics from baseballreference.com and uh, made some pivot tables. In a pivot table, you can drag fields here. You can have row fields. You can have column fields. You can have data fields. Um, and one thing that sometimes happens is you may have a job like this or an interest like this where you have data that's constantly changing and you need to update a whole bunch of pivot tables. They're amazing, but they're a little challenging to keep updating. So what my spreadsheet does, uh, it uses VBA Excel. Um, I'm going to put a link to the file in the description of the video if you want it. But all those properties, or at least many of the properties of a pivot table, you've got row fields. Those are kind of on the side. You've got column fields. Those go kind of across the top. You've got page fields, which what those let you do in, in newer Excel. You have these data slicers. So like if you just want to see just Arizona or for some reason you just want to see 23-year-old pitchers, you, you can do that. Or pitchers who have one win, etc. Et um, and they're up here. Uh, page fields uh, allow you to do that. Data fields are kind of what they sound like. Um, you're trying to get the name, maybe their ERA, the rank, and there are different data functions that you might want to do with those. You can count, average, sum is what I have here. There are some more you can do if you mess with the pivot table itself. Uh, I even let you change the number formatting. So if it's an integer, decimal, etc. And I know it sounds a little tedious, like why would why would anybody do this? Well, you do it because let's say I downloaded new data from baseballreference.com here. And they even have a button where you can um, get it as a CSV file. So let's say I did that and I pasted it. I can show you how to do that in a minute. Um, what I would do is I would go to this pitching tab and I would paste it in. And to generate the pivot tables again, I would just go to any one of the pivot tables, hit this button, and it's going to magically create a brand new file that has pivot tables set up for each of the reports just the way we specified and it also gives you a copy of the data. The other thing you might be doing, and I didn't do it in this because I wanted to leave it um, pretty basic, uh, you might be some sort of um, hobbyist or you might like playing fantasy sports. You can make your own formulas here and then you're just replacing this and your formulas update and then it pulls that into the pivot table. So it can be um, it can be pretty powerful. So let's say you want to use this. What do you do? Well, first of all, you find the link at the bottom. You download it. It does have some Excel VBA. Um, it will only work on PCs. It won't work on phones. It won't work on Apple devices. Um, and the uh, slicers only work in newer Excel, 2010 and newer. But it might do the other stuff on older Excel. I'm not sure. So these green tabs are reports. So what you need to do with a report is you need to specify which worksheet has the data on it. So I have pitching, but I could have downloaded uh, batting as well and made a new tab and put that in. And if I wanted stats from batting, I'd type batting because that's the name of that worksheet. This, I should spell better, is the name of the worksheet for your report where the pivot tables are going to go, what you're, what you're calling that. Uh, these are just the uh, height. So if you look here... Uh, height is this, this is the width, and I specified three of these, so that's a variable, okay. Um, it tells you when the report was generated. Ignore the data from, um, I should probably get rid of that. Uh, and you can set your fields, you can set uh, the order. One thing you can do with uh, each of these fields is um, order. So like if I'm doing it by team ascending, that's going to mean that the teams on this report are going to be in alphabetical order. But I don't have to. Like I might want to sort, for example, by, well, let's see which team has the highest um, ERA, for example. So I can make my data field ERAs in there somewhere. 
and I probably want the average, not not a count of ERA, because that's an actual number. Sorry, average, and I actually would want that a decimal. I'd probably make it three decimals. So now if I was to run that report, what it would do, in fact, let's just do it. Uh, let me just make sure which report we were on. We were on report one, so if I go here to report one, uh, these are actually going to be sorted by ERA on the end here. So see how this is lowest, ERA getting higher. Um, now if you want to make additional reports, so you can have these pre, so you don't have to keep building them over and over by hand. Uh, what you can do is just make a copy, and you have to name it exactly this way. You have to name it R followed by the next number, so four. And if I had a fifth report, I could make five. Although you gotta be careful in that the report sheet you're calling it here has to have a different name so that it, it doesn't uh, get confused and give you an error. And I did promise I would show you how to get data. Um, so CSV is a pretty common way to get the data. So baseball reference, for example, you can um, get this as a CSV and it's gonna be this big long table of information like this. And I would highlight this like this. Okay, I'm just gonna copy those first couple rows for demonstration purposes. And I would make a new data table. And I'm just gonna call this like data two. It doesn't really matter. And I would paste this here. Let's try that again. I would paste this here like that. And this is all comma separated. So you go to data and you're gonna go text to column and you're gonna choose delimiter, and you're gonna use comma, finish. Now it has everything you need, all the names and the numbers and everything. And you can have as many data sheets as you want. Just when you run the report, you have to tell it which data sheet you're, you're pulling from. This is also really useful when you're responsible for maintaining the data, but somebody else just needs the reports. I should point out when the report is generated, it does give the actual um, data that was used to build the report so they can still tweak the pivot tables. But if you had any formulas, it's all gonna be um, just copy pasted as values. So I have a feeling this is gonna be one of those videos where very few people are gonna watch it, but they're gonna be half of people who are gonna be like, that is amazing. And if you're one of those people, you are my people. So hopefully there's somebody out there. Oh, uh, I, I will take a second and show you the code. So if you want to see the uh, code, you just hit Alt F11 to bring up the uh, VBA editor. Try it again. Alt F11 uh, brings you here. And uh, I've broken the code into some, some utilities that do some stuff I'm not going to talk about. And reporting that does some stuff. And really what it does is it loops through those worksheet pages we made and pulls in the names of the fields you want and it generates the, um, the pivot tables. Uh, if you get really curious about this, let me know. I do have an email, prerequisite name at gmail.com. Like I said, I think there's probably gonna be only a handful of people who watch this video, but I think it has the potential to be like, wow, that's actually pretty neat. And I think there's a couple people out there who like your job is crunching numbers all the time and this is gonna save you lots of time. For me, this is just a hobby, but I haven't seen anybody do this exactly like this, so hopefully, uh, hopefully this is helpful.